Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and this is my second day at the Occupy Toronto protest, where I'm trying to bring their attention to the Argentine solution of paying people with provincial bonds, and that I can now give them tax credits if they can get donations for food for the tax protesters, now that I founded my popper party of Ontario, YouTube for it. You know, the poppers. So, the poor people. Um, now, what, what would be the duty of the kids? King of the broke people. Now, how would the king of the broke people? How do you help? find your job? Charity, you think? Or get him a job. Right. So I think the first step would be not to be the king. Well, actually, <laughs> no, 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 no. she missed. She didn't get it at all, eh? I decided there was something wrong with the mortgage death gamble fudge usury. And I saw it as my duty. To offer the wage slaves, the debt slaves, and the interest free So, it's called the Time Standard of Money. And right now, we interchange with IO user powers on the time making, it's called. It's spreading all over the world. Come closer, because the other day we couldn't hear anything. All right, yeah. As, as an engineer, so you studied the. What year did you study before trying to find the coast? What year did you study? When I studied, I studied from 70, 69 until 1977. Carleton University. The only university with a mathematics of gambling course. No kidding. Yeah. I, oh, was no, I, uh, I studied computer science as I was 1973. Okay, well then I came up with the first time bank software called Let's Green Dollars. So that was my point about the king of the poppers routine, yeah. is that what's the duty of the engineer? It's my duty to reprogram the bank's computers to give people financial freedom with interest-free credit. And that's the same duty as the king of the poor people too. So, <laughs> king of the poppers, I'm not ashamed. No. We're, we may be poor, but what, what, we know what, the deck's stacked. No, no, uh, what about this sort of money they have here? Toronto dollars? Yeah, Toronto. The Toronto dollar at the St. Lawrence market is pretty good stuff, but it's not as good as time banking. It's an inferior model, but it's still good. Yes. He's a wage slave, he's a pauper. And what can I do to set him free? What's your problem? Uh, my problem uh, is uh, that there's a lot of people that are struggling, not just in the world, but in our own society. And I think that we have to look at the root causes of that problem. And what are you, causes, what, I feel, is our monetary system. All right, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? We print money out of thin air. Well, casinos do that with poker chips, and that doesn't bother me at all. Keep going. And I think we have enough food in the world to feed everyone. We have enough water, agreed, clean agreed. water to make for everybody. We have enough renewable energy agreed. to make an abundance of that. shelter. So why can't we get to it? Why can't we get to it? Well, the people that don't have access to those things just don't have the money to pay for it. And why don't we have enough money to access everything we could be producing? Well, there's only a few. A uh, small portion of society is able to create money out of thin air. Not All everybody right. Is. Not Someone can create the chips, fine, and and they control the distribution. Of those chips. That's true. That they shouldn't be allowed to create and decide who gets the new chips because they'll put it into weaponry instead of farming. And that's what the banksters have done for history. They run the credit system. They decide where new money goes, where we put the new chips. And it's never farmers. It's always warriors. So, keep going now. So if you think about it, if you if you have, say, a million dollars and you put it into a bank account, they will pay you interest for keeping it there. All right. You Can get I to earn money. But if I, say, don't have a million dollars and I need to buy a house or I need to buy something that I need some money for, <laughs> then they'll actually charge me money for borrowing it. So really the money that I pay in interest to borrow the money is actually going to the guy who, went, uh, who just keeps the bank out doing nothing. So this guy gets to unearned keep money there, in, unearned not to society at all. <laughs> I am contributing by starting a business or by having a home and, and trying to have something. But you need credit to do that. But I need to pay this guy who's doing nothing in order for me to do something. <laughs> That's right. All right, four minute poem. And at the end of it, I'm going to ask him a question. All right, can Good. I stand? My Absolutely. knees are... Do All right. Like. When you were little, did you ever dream of printing cash, <laughs> creating money? Yes. I'm just curious, if you're doing this, why are you doing this? 
Oh, I'm sorry because I just happened to wander in at this moment in time. Why don't you go watch that over there? I, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm not. I'm not here to. Uh, <laughs> I'm just talking to the guy, and it happens to be more interesting than raw, raw, raw. We should stand, you know. Anyway, when you were little, did you ever dream of printing cash, creating money, women? Creating money like a flash. Creating money accurately means to have the plates. The stamping of some paper into notes best demonstrates, or stamping metal into coins, or blips computerized into your check bank account deposits. Checks now authorized. So whether paper, metal, volts of electricity, to have the plates is printing money absolutely free. Now, if you printed it to spend, the others would be whale. They'd call it counterfeiting and they'd send you off to jail. But what if government would let you print it up to lend with only what you can collect in interest to spend? If you can print and lend a thousand out at 10%, you'd make a hundred interest on printing that you lent. But if you could print up and lend a million out, you'd get an extra hundred thousand dollars for your fee on debt. If government stops using its own plates and comes to you, a billion printed nets a hundred million revenue. With everybody being taxed to pay you interest of all the scams in history, to have the plates is best. Though never spending, only lending, riches do await to all with the plates become loan sharks to the state. And though to join the few who thus they profit you might dream, wake up to see we're all the victims of this greedy scheme. Though governments of old had treasury run money plates, without the interest of middlemen at rip-off rates, most governments today to banking industry have lost control of money plates, so interest is now a cost. To service debt in 99, Canada's request $320 billion taxed for interest. We're taxed almost $1,000 each per month to pay for interest the holders of our plates they gave away. So, we paupers, we want to get the plates back from the banks and have Treasury create the money for a printing charge and thanks. Now the interest we save the thou month will be split up, I recommend, for each to get a thousand dollars monthly dividend. As if you owned a share in the incorporated state, an income guaranteed for life, no question, no debate. Your share of the robot paycheck. So, will you agree control of money plates by private banks should end? With all that interest diverted to our monthly dividend, Sounds great. Yes, sir. So that's what we want. Get the plates back from the banks, intercept the Brinks truck with our taxes for interest in it, and then give it back to ourselves. Woo! So I don't have to change anything. I just got to intercept the Brinks truck, get the plates back, and we get a G note a month that they're stealing from us. <laughs> now, in the meantime, though, right now, I'm talking about the Argentine solution. In Argentina, they were broke in 2001. All foreign debt paid off in 2006. How'd they do that? Well, the union said, you're not going to lay us off. You're going to pay us with small denomination provincial bonds that we can pay for our hydro, taxes, medical, and license fees. And everybody in town took them too. Everybody kept their jobs. They hired more government civil service to give more services, more infrastructure, and everybody could have a job being paid with government bonds. The Argentine solution broke in 2001. All foreign debt paid off five years later. We can do the same thing. And the last thing, in the last election, I registered a political party. So if you get any pizzeria, to donate 400 bucks worth of pizza or Chinese food or subs or falafels to the protesters in the name of the Popper Party of Ontario, I'll give them a tax credit worth 75% back. John Turmel, Popper Party of Ontario, and because I've been picketing for 30 years, I approve, and therefore any restaurant contributes food, make it out to Popper Party of Ontario, 
give me the receipt and I can get you 75% tax credit to finance the poor people movement. So a lot of fun coming up. Poppers.htm at my site. Go to YouTube, look for Popper Party, and uh, I guess I better not steal the show. But I tell you, tax credits for goodies, that's a good one. And the Argentinian bonds, that's a good one. And this wage slave who can turn on and become empowered right away. Watch what I'm going to do with them. You got a Facebook page? Uh, we do, yeah. Go to your Facebook page, your info page. Here's what I did. In 1999, I traveled to Europe. 39 nights out of 40, I paid with an IOU for a night back in Canada. And you could all do that too, couldn't you? Put people up in your hometowns. So, for promising to put them back up in my hometown, 39 nights out of 40, they put me up in Europe. But when I'm in France, well, their barter system, they pay themselves 60 green francs an hour. And in Germany, they pay themselves 20 green marks an hour. And in Canada, 12 green dollars. But between countries, hours. So, I owed five hours per night. When I got back, I emailed everybody I owed. Anybody can do that too. You go to your info page, you set up offers, wants, hours given, hours received. Time banking, underground economy. So that's basically my story for today. Oh, the Zeke guys moved. Guess what? Come here, Terry. You connected with them? I am. Okay, he's connected with the Zeke guys movement. This is the first video ever that published the first part of the derivation of my miracle equation. Do you remember the part in the video where he says the problem is you got P principal, but you owe P plus I? I derive that. The next step they don't have in the video, but what's the remainder, the guys who get knocked out? I over P plus I. Tells you how many guys get knocked out of the mortgage, musical chairs game, how many watches get seized. So anyway, they got half my derivation. I'm proud of them. They're the first. They did show the musical chairs. I mean, but yeah, they just didn't show that for me. And they, they're one step away, though. <laughs> Tell them. Cool. Okay. Actually, you can find my math with just one word, big math, and it comes up. Right on. Right. Yes. Thank you, Mike. I, I would work for anything, but did it make a difference? I mean, this Argentine. Well, are they doing better than us? Yeah. Well, they did, but as soon as they get back on their feet, the regular money system starts lending a bank money again when they get off the barter money. So that's and every time it crashes, it's back on barter money. Yeah, so is that a, like a theory we should be hopping on when they're yeah, already... Yeah, set up barter money from the start. But it's why, already, they're already... In. Why, why represent our collateral with dirt chips for a fee when we can represent our collateral with our chips for free? Because, that is, absolutely. You're using the banker's chips in your wallet. We've got to get off their chips and use our own. Here's the poem, the ethos for our puffer party of Ontario. I want no cops and gambling, sex or drugs or rock and roll. That's libertarian. And I want no interest on loans. Pay cash or time. No dole. Now, Argentina was broke in 2001, all paid off their foreign debt in 2006. Didn't make the news. How'd they do that? Well, instead of the unions all being laid off, they said you're going to pay us with small denomination provincial bonds we can pay hydro taxes, medical, and license fees with. Everybody in town took the bonds, all the unions stayed employed, they hired more people, and in five years all foreign debt paid off. It's called the Argentine Solution, and that's what I'm pushing here. But how are I'll they take, now? I'll take provincial bonds in my paycheck. I got a video on my site, if you YouTube for Popper Party, where I got underfunded healthcare workers. I said, if nothing else, will you take provincial bonds for a raise? And they both went, yeah. So, that's it. Argentine Solution. But in the meantime, I registered a political party in the last provincial election. 
And now I got the right to give a $300 tax credit paid by the government to anybody who donates 400 bucks worth of food to the protesters. Every restaurant in town can have a $300 tax credit on their next tax return if they donate 400 bucks worth of food to the proper party so I can give it away. How's the marketing going for that? I just registered the party. I just came here yesterday. I just announced it on the, the website. I said, go out there and find someone to contribute. And bring me the receipt for the proper party donation and they get 75% of their money back. Not a bad deal. So, Back in two, 1993, the OPP busted my game and house. Biggest game and house raid in history, 28 tables. Called it Project Robin Hood. Well, now Robin Hood's got access to the sheriff's vault. And I can pass out tax credits to anybody on their next tax return. So any restaurant, I put the offer up at the Occupy site. Any restaurant wants to donate 400 bucks worth of food to the protesters, just make it out to the proper party of Ontario donation, and we'll give them a $300 tax credit paid for by the government. So that's what I offer. I can, with two guys, I register a political party, and now I can issue tax credits. Yeehaw! And that's nothing. For 2800 they get 44 cents on the dollar. Look at use it or lose it businesses like movie theaters, motels, rentals, you know, golf driving ranges. I say, give me 2800 worth of free tickets and here's 1200 Then I tell my members, we, we're the only party with our own poker chips. Other parties, the liberals, they can't accept a thousand, six a thousand movie tickets. They got no way to distribute it, too expensive. But all our members, we got our own poker chips. I just added on the directory and say, this movie theater now takes our chips. Everybody goes, who's here for? So that's what we're setting up. Popper Party. Just go to look, YouTube, Popper Party, and you'll find my videos there. It's good in the video about yesterday and the reactions to people hearing about the Argentine solution. But, you know, any pizzeria who wants to give 400 bucks worth of pizza to the protesters, Chinese food, you know, subs, anything, usually small guys, hey, they wouldn't mind having 300 bucks back, okay? 75 cents on the dollar. Raise 75 elections, 74 losses. That's my Guinness record. Yeah, I'm in a Guinness Book of Records for most elections and most election losses. 75 and 74, one election was called off. <laughs> Who are you running? Us. Brent. Brantford. I live right beside the poker casino because I'm a professional poker player. <laughs> Except in my picket sign yesterday, I had a picture of me when I was busted picketing the IMF World Bank. In 1982, when I was alone, now they won't bust me no more, you know, but the anti-bank is, you know, <laughs> more people have been busted out of the game and are joining me in the down and out section. Hey, we're the majority poor people, you know. I was real lucky I picked Popper Party for a name, now that I think about it, you know. Darn right, watch us go. In 93, I ran the biggest casino ever busted. They called me Robin Hood, and now I got access to the sheriff's vault. And sorry. I can pass out tax credits. Hi, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I just wanted to um, interject. Second, just to let you all who are watching know that that's the General Assembly going on for this occupation. Yeah. So just to be aware that that's happening over there. And there's going to be lots of things happening all throughout the week and wonderful people like my man here talking and sharing his thoughts and his views and his poetry. Um, but it's important. I brought my accordion too. Music. I haven't heard any Gypsy, music. homeless music. But it's important also to pay attention to what the General Assembly and what's going on there as well. Just so that you understand that and have a balance in terms of what I'm you're doing. I'm planning to go here. back when they get coherent. Again. When they get coherent. All right then. Cool. Well, that's good. That's good that people are being chased. And your name? Right here. John Turmel. John Oh, by the way, if you can talk any pizzeria or Chinese food into giving 400 bucks worth of food to the protesters, I got a political party that can give them a 75% tax credit. John, I'll take that Have you talked to the, uh, the food table about that? I'm going to. I came back today for that reason. Yesterday, everybody was too busy. You know, so uh, what can I say? Let's fan out and find every pizza in the restaurant and live high off the hog at government expense. Come on.
thought you were saying the proper version. Popper, like the prince and the popper. Right. You just got. If you're, if you're not ashamed to be in poor, because you know the game is stacked, you can qualify. We admit we're poor, but we're not ashamed. Congratulations. Thanks. I think we've all been on the front lines before. <laughs> uh, go find popper party now. We've got this Friday. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. You know? Any, oh, by the way, you get 10% 10 of, <laughs> 10 of any contribution of pizza you bring in. I'm a professional poker player. If you look for a great Canadian gambler, I come up. I'm a Taj professor, but I wrote the book, Play Holden Poker Like a Bookie. I'm the best limit Holden Poker player in the world because I have the highest average hour rate. Why are you I'm here to spread the word about the Argentine solution. 2001, they were broke. Five years later, they had all paid off their foreign debt. How'd they do that? Well, the union said, don't lay us off. We'll take small denominations, provincial bonds, and we can pay our taxes, hydro, medical, and license fees. And everybody in town took them, so nobody lost their jobs. They could hire more people for government services, like infrastructure and forestry and all this stuff. And with more people working, they pulled their way out of debt. Within five years from being broke by using government bonds, small denomination interest-free government bonds, they were all paid off. So we can do it. Are you sleeping here last night? No, no. I was here yesterday, but I went home so I could post the video of yesterday. And after today, I'll go home and I'll post the video of today again. So you don't plan on camping out here? I may at some point come by with a sleeping bag if I have a free evening. But uh, I have in the past. But I've been protesting. Toronto Star, 1982. I was busted picketing the IMF World Bank Conference when I was alone in those days. 30 years ago. 29. So now you see all these people protesting the banks and the message is really falling on great ears. But then I'll be asking people, do you work for provincial bonds? And you'll be surprised. During the last municipal elections, I said, hey kids, would you work for bus tickets? Hey, 99% of the kids would work for bus tickets. He's got here. these buses go in. Same idea, community currency, provincial bonds are the same idea. Put idle men power back to the that's great. That's okay. At this point, I went and switched into a suit. The book Dress for Success said that if you go into a corporation, 100 corporations with a suit and 100 corporations with jeans on, which do you think you get higher up? Well, the suit. Because the suits, they accept suits more so. And that's why I've always worn a suit so that that generation can be comfortable. Plus, it also shocks them to see someone in a suit protesting out there. Have you ever heard of the Argentine solution? No. Okay, so if you were a civil servant, would you take a pay raise in provincial bonds if we had no cash? Uh, well, I was a civil servant until I retired, and uh, yeah, I probably would. Thanks a lot, man. Bye. How about you? Would you work for provincial bonds that you could pay your taxes, hydro, medical, and license fees? Why not? All right, good stuff. That's the Argentine solution. <laughs> Jonathan Levka. Okay. Um, basically, have you heard of the Argentine solution? No, I have okay. Not. So, if you had no other choice, would you take your raise in Ontario provincial bonds that you can pay your hydro, taxes, medical, and license fees with? That's a pretty good idea. Thanks a lot. No Popper Party, YouTube for Popper Party, and it's all there. When they went broke in 2001, in 2006 they paid off all their foreign debt. They did that by the union saying, you're not going to lay us off, you're going to pay us with small denomination bonds. So we can pay our hydro, taxes, medical, license fees with them. So, if we got no other source of money, would you take a raise in Ontario bonds you can pay your hydro, taxes, medical and licenses with? Clearly, I'm a single parent. Would I rather be homeless like I am right now? Everyone change! Profit before people will never work! What will? And I'm talking about what happened in Argentina. Would you take some provincial bonds as a raise in your paycheck? The 
you can use for hydro, taxes, medical, and license fees. Um, yeah. So, that's how we can come up with enough money to give everybody a job with provincial bonds. The Argentine solution. Louis. Okay, Louis. Ever heard of the Argentine solution? No. In two well, the bonds are redeemed by the province's hydro, taxes, medical, and license fees. Where the hydro, taxes, medical, license fees redeemed bonds? Like, yeah. Where do they get the money for, to pay? So basically we have to... We pay, the doc we pay the doctors and nurses with the bonds. You take them in your stores and then go pay. That's just right. And then if you can we, go if we can trust our government, yeah, I think that can well, be an idea. Well, I'd rather trust my government than the bankers. Well, absolutely, well, I know what you're saying, but we have to be right? weary yeah. of our They're government a... as well, no doubt. Right? Well, remember, <laughs> these are governments who are debtors. Yeah. These guys are in debt up to here, and that's why they're continual screw-ups. But you get a government with their own money, they won't be screw-ups. Provincial bonds is how Argentina did it, and that's how I want to do it too. Now, neat like thing. The neat yeah, thing, I though. Like the idea, you know, you gotta be, you gotta yeah. stop yeah. borrowing money from international banks and yeah, print our own. Bank of Canada. Yes. I heard that it is possible for like our Bank of Canada to remove all debt from private banks, place it under Canada's national debt, and not get any interest charged onto that debt for the duration that we have. Yes. So we won't be getting. Yes. Compounded interest. Yes. In other words, here's how I say it. Everybody can log on to the Bank of Canada's computer like PayPal, cut checks to settle all their interest-bearing mortgages and debts, and the new number at the Bank of Canada, all payments go against principal after that. So that's what you just said. You said the Bank of Canada lends people interest-free money to settle their interest-bearing debts, and after that, all their debts are interest-free. Why, 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 why are we doing that, though? Like, because, because the bankers suckered the government into giving them the plates. I got a four-minute poem. You want to hear it? I'd love to hear it. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Okay. We're friendly media. We're friendly media. Sir. So Charlie from DDP Studios. We're in an interview with the gentleman. He's going to tell us a little bit about the banking situation right. in our country. All right. And your name is? John Termel. Okay. I'm the new founder of the uh, Poppers Party. And we're not ashamed of being poor because we know the deck is stacked. So, I'm here pushing the Argentine solution. In 2001, Argentina was broke. Everybody knew that. But by 2006, they paid off all their foreign debt. That didn't make the news. How did you do, they do that? They do that? <laughs> well, the union said, no money? Well, you're not going to lay us off. We'll accept small denomination provincial bonds we can use for hydro, taxes, medical, and license fees. Well, everybody in town took those small bond currency like dollars. The unions had full employment, hired more people, worked their way out of debt in five years. So, we can do the same thing. Well, well first of all, what, 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 what is happening in our country? Why, why is Harper and Jim Clay saying things are fine? Things are just fine in this country. Well, they always say that. They're lying. The point is, the basic problem is death gamble. Mort gage in French. Mort gage means death gamble. Everybody borrows 10, everybody's got to bring back 11. So imagine you bring up your watch's collateral to the pump house, borrow 10 liters of liquidity, dump it in the economic pool, and now everybody's got to come out with 11. Well, at the end of the game, nine okay. guys come out with 11, one guy gets squeezed out and loses his house. Okay, good analogy, but on a simple basis, what's the point of this? What is happening? Where is our money? Where are we getting our money from? Where is well, this country getting money? Money comes into <laughs> circulation when banks take a loan. So we go to the bank, we borrow a new hundred bucks into circulation, and by next year we who owe are we one. borrowing it from? From the banks who create new chips. Are the banks Canadian? Yeah. Aren't they international? No, they create new Canadian chips. Okay, so why is it you're saying that none of the big things are saying you can't? Ah, because the chartered banks created the third their own Canadian chips. The chartered banks have the right to create Canadian chips. Who's getting all the interest in them? Okay. Now, the problem is they didn't print the interest. I don't mind. They gave us a hundred, but they're demanding one ten. Well, we all can't come up with one ten. Only nine of us can. One guy gets squeezed out to take his house. Can we ever get that out of debt in this country? Can we ever get out of debt? Only by refinancing at the Bank of Canada, cutting checks to pay all our mortgages, our interest-bearing debts come up with a stable interest-free debt and after that all payments go against principal. So it's like PayPal. Everybody logs on to the Bank of Canada's computer. Okay, what's your name? Juan 
Juan Garcia. Okay, Juan, I'm talking about the Argentine solution. Would you accept a raise in provincial Ontario bonds you can use for hydro, taxes, medical and license fees? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I will pay you with a provincial bond that you can use at hydro, taxes, medical and license fee places. Is and everybody in town will socialism? take them. No, it's friendly social credit. Social credit? Because we're talking the credit system which is now social instead of anti-social. With usury interest, it becomes anti-social. So I'm saying, should we pay people with provincial bonds like they did in Argentina to go from broke in 2001 to all paid off in 2006? Well, we're not entirely broke yet, so... Should we wait till we're broke before we look at it? I think a lot of people will wait. Okay, all right. Kings of the poppers. Time. Oh, here's my question. In Argentina in 2001, they were broke. By 2006, they paid off all their debt. How'd they do that? <laughs> yeah, well, the union said, you got no money? Don't lay us off. We will take small denomination provincial bonds we can use to pay hydro taxes, medical and license fees with. Well, everybody else in town pays hydro licenses, so they said, we'll take it. Everybody kept their jobs, more jobs. So you're saying we're doing that now, but we're We could be doing that. We could be paying ourselves with provincial bonds like they did in Argentina. So would you take a raise in $10 provincial bonds? Yes, I would. All right, that's it. Thank you, you very much. Vote. What's your name? Tally Bond. Check out the Popper Party at YouTube. YouTube, right on. The Poor People Party. Yeah. Thanks, bye. Occupy Toronto, what's your name? Robert Young. Okay, Robert. Basically, the Argentine solution. So the question is, if you had no other choice, would you accept $10 provincial bonds in your paycheck? Sure. All right, thanks a lot. I had no other choice, all right. Absolutely, thanks a lot. That's how we're going to create jobs. Oh, best of all, I just founded a new political party, the Popper Party. And any business that sends 400 bucks worth of food down to the protesters gets a $300 tax credit now. Nice. Thanks a lot. See ya. Thanks. So that's it. That's the second day of the Occupy Toronto. Lots of people would be willing to work for provincial bonds. Now let's see if we can use the tax credits over the next few days to get them some free food.